contract with me under false pretenses. Usually, when I get forced into a corner, I can shoot my way out. But this time, you've made that impossible. Have gun. Will travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875. The Carlton Hotel, headquarters of a man called Paladin. Oh, uh, Mr. Paladin, do you like a coffee now? Yes, I... Hey, boy. What are you doing waiting on the table? I come warn you. Of what? Man over there. Uh, he watch you all the time you eat. Uh, maybe so he enemy. I think I better tell you. What man? Man over by... Oh, oh too bad. He coming over here now. Huh. I've never seen him before. Well, I've been nearby. You need me? Yes, I'll let you know, hey boy. Oh, uh, are you Mr. Paladin? That's right. Uh, I've been watching you, Mr. Paladin. I, I've decided you'll do. Well, thank you. Uh, what will I do? Well, you're just the man for the job. You're capable enough from what I hear, and I dare say fearless. Oh, you flatter me. No, it's not flattering, Mr. Paladin. Facts. Based upon keen observation. Uh, may I sit down? By all means. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name's Felber Fid. Felber? <clears throat> uh, what can I do for you, Mr. Fid? Well, I have been sent here by the respectable element of Brackwater. Brackwater? It's a cow town south of the, the Hatchbees. Oh, yes, yes. The respectable element has triumphed in Brackwater, Mr. Patterson. Oh. Triumphed, I tell you, but... It was not an easy victory. Well, virtue's victory never is. Well, there remains, however, one pocket of resistance, one holdout, one sink of sin. And that's where you come in. Where I come in? Exactly. A.J. Banyan's the name. Of whom? Uh, the holdout, A.J. Banyan, proprietor of the Paradise Saloon, which I tell you is indeed a cesspool of corruption. This A.J. Banyan refuses to listen to the sweet voice of reason, so we are compelled to employ the force of your persuasion. At my usual fee, Mr. Fidd? Of course. Well, that's a relief. And so often I've found that the respectable element believes that virtue is its own reward. Well, not in this case. We were paid. Well, then you have just engaged a pied piper who guarantees to remove the rats of Brackwater. Wonderful. I thank you, Mr. Paladin. I thank you indeed. Oh, how the good folk of Brackwater will rejoice when they hear these splendid tidings. Constipation is something people don't talk much about. But it can be a problem for anyone, even doctors. And when constipation occurs, it's interesting to see just what doctors consider important about a laxative they might use or recommend. Now, a majority of the doctors we heard from had this to say. A laxative should be effective, gentle, as close to natural acting as possible, and a medicine that can be used with complete confidence. Well, pleasant-tasting chocolate at x -Lax is effective. Overnight, it helps you toward your normal regularity. x -Lax is gentle. Next morning, it gives you the closest thing to natural action. And that's why many doctors and millions of people use x -Lax with complete confidence. x -Lax, the laxative that helps you toward your normal regularity gently. Overnight. Is x -Lax in your medicine cabinet? <laughs> Blackwater wasn't much of a town. A wide main street, deep in dust, a few scraggly cottonwoods aridly protesting against being asked to grow where no tree had grown before, but it was home to the respectable element whose roots went deep, many of them being the first families who helped found this mecca almost a decade ago. The other element came and went, came thirsty and went slaked hungover, and otherwise depleted, thanks to the hospitality of the Paradise Soul. <laughs> Just a straight answer, please. Where can I find Mr. Bannon? Well, I'm 
trying to tell you, stranger. <laughs> you see those four people leaning on the bar over there? Yeah. <laughs> There's four ten-gallon hats, right? Right. <laughs> four gun belts, right? Right. <laughs> well, you look lower. Only three of them are wearing pants. <laughs> the one wearing a skirt is a lady. You ask her about <laughs> Mr. Banyan. <laughs> Thank you. I will. I beg your pardon. You know what can I do for you, stranger? Well, they said that you could tell me where to find Mr. Banyan. Mr. Banyan? There ain't no Mr. Banyan. There never was. A.J. Banyan? A.J. Banyan. That's me, Alice Jane Banyan. Ooh. Any comments, criticisms, or objections? Oh, no, no, no. None at all. Well, then what can I do for you? Nothing, ma'am. Nothing at all. I guess I got the wrong party. I'm sorry to have troubled you. <laughs> no trouble at all. Drop in any time you're thirsty. We got the best drinking whiskey in town. Matter of fact, it's the only drinking whiskey in town. <laughs> Mr. Fid. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, Mr. Paladin. Mr. Fid, I must ask you to release me from my contract. Release? Oh, my. No, no that would be quite impossible, I'm afraid. A contract's a contract. Of course it is, but it can be dissolved by mutual consent of the contracting party. Yeah, yeah, that's true, only I, I don't consent. Now, look here, Mr. Uh, Fid. You made that contract under false pretense. Uh, Mr. Paladin, that's a very serious accusation. Nevertheless, true. You engaged me to rid this town of a man named Banyan. Uh, 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 oh, no, 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 no. I never said anything about a man named Banyan. I engage you to get rid of A.J. Banyan. But you didn't tell me the A.J. stood for Alice Jane. Well, now, that's true in a way, Mr. Patterson, but I, I didn't say A.J. stood for Albert James or Arthur John either. Now, now uh, did I? No, but you led me to believe... No, 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 no I did not, Mr. Patterson. The subject just never came up. But I can't get rough with a woman. Well, you can with this one, <laughs> and she'll get rough right back to you. you. Rougher? She is the roughest woman you'd ever want to meet. You, you don't suppose if she wasn't, that we'd be wasting the town's good money hiring an expert like you? <laughs> no, no, sir. We, like, we'd have thrown her out ourselves. We tried, but uh, she wouldn't cooperate. Mr. Fidden, you place me in a most difficult position. But I reckon you've been in worse ones before. But I could shoot my way out of them. But you might have to shoot your way out of this one <laughs> before you're through. <laughs> If you're smoking more today, but enjoying it less, try Camels. The Camel blend of costly Turkish and domestic tobaccos has never been equal for rich flavor, easygoing mildness, real smoking satisfaction every time you light up. The best tobacco makes the best smoke. Have a real cigarette, a real cigarette, a real cigarette, have a Camel! <laughs> you to visit us again. What can I do for you? Uh, uh whiskey, please. You look like you're carrying the troubles of the world on your shoulders. <laughs> I am. Then have a drink on me. Thank you, Miss Banyan. Oh, <laughs> miss! Nobody oh. called me Miss. I'm A.J. to my friends and my enemies, and folks are either one or the other. Oh, I'm sorry. A.J., I'd like to be your friend. No reason why we can't. I'd like to talk to you. Go ahead, talk. Well, um, couldn't we go over to that table where it's more quiet? Sure. Why not? Hey, hey. Yeah, Tex. Ain't it a fact that Ulysses S. Grant is the worst president the United States ever had? I wouldn't know, Tex. I've been trying to tell this mule-headed shorty here. Well, now, who's mule? Now, simmer down, boys. You know the house rules. Now, obey them. You'll live longer. Well, all right. Thank you. 
you, sir. This table, do you like it? Yes, it's fine. Well, then sit down. Thank you. Now, you have uh, house rules. Oh, huh? in a way. Three subjects is taboo in this saloon. Politics, religion, and women. Too many good men have died defending one or the other. Yet where would the world be without them? Better off. But you're a woman. Well, I never felt much like one. That's a pity. Oh, I don't know. I'd rather be the way I am than be yoked up to one of these hairier Ranahan. These aren't the only men in the world. <laughs> Excuse me, stranger. Catch! What? Charlie! I warned you! You shot my head off. Mine, too. Next time, I'll shoot your head off. I told you to simmer down. I don't mind if you kill each other, but do it outside. Won't have none of you giving this place a bad name. Now, where were we, stranger? We were talking about you. What were we saying? Well, I believe that I had observed that it was a pity that a lady of your obvious charm and talent should be born to blush unseen and waste her fragrance on this desert air. Uh, stranger, you talk plum poetic. It is time, Miss Banyan, that you thought of yourself as a woman. A woman still young, still attractive. A woman for whom some man somewhere awaits. Where? Who knows? Certainly not here. The world, my dear Miss Banyan, is yours for the taking. So why don't you abandon this provincial backwater? Come into the wide, wonderful world of gallant men and lovely ladies of whom, believe me, Miss Banyan, you have no peer. Well, you make that sound mighty tempting. Then you will leave Brackwater? Well, I might permit myself to be persuaded. Then by all means, permit me to persuade you. Look at these hairy-eared tin horns and ask yourself why you spend another day in this jerkwater town. Why, well, say you are right. You've convinced me that I was born for better things than this. Good. How soon can you leave? Just as soon as you're ready. Me? Yes, sir. Just a minute, dearie. Listen, boy! to make. First off, tonight the drinks are on the house. Wait a minute. The drinks are on the house because I am closing down the Paradise Saloon. The Paddy Waste crowd in this town has been wanting to get rid of me for some time now. You all know that. What they wasn't able to do, this stranger has done. He has opened my eyes and is going to take me out of all this. Oh, now, oh, now wait a minute. I didn't say anything. Tonight's the last night, boys. Drink hearty. Oh, but uh, now, Miss Bannon, please. Oh, well. Have it your way for now, A.J. Dandruff bothers most men, most women too. So listen, today you can get rid of embarrassing dandruff in just three minutes. Yes, with Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo, unsightly dandruff's gone in three minutes. It's the quickest, easiest of all eating shampoos. That's not all. Using Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep embarrassing dandruff away. Simply apply in the unique Fitch manner. Before you wet hair, rub in one minute. This way, Fitch shampoo penetrates right down to the scalp. Next, add water. Lather one minute to wash every trace of dandruff out of your hair. Then rinse one minute. All that loosened dandruff goes down the drain. In three minutes with Fitch, one rubbing, one lathering, one rinsing, dandruff's gone. And never forget, gentle Fitch can also leave your hair up to 35% brighter. To get rid of dandruff problems forever, brighten hair too. Use Fitch regularly. Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo today, only 59 cents. Decided to see it your way, thanks to this sweet talking stranger. Good, good, but it just happens I have the papers right here with me. Do you want to sign them now? You making the same offer? Yeah, the same offer. All righty. <laughs> there you go. He's your 
charge, Selber. And I'll have the money for you the first thing in the morning, as soon as I open my safe. Oh, I trust you, honey. Well, she'll make a fine meeting house. Well, you got this stranger here to thank for bringing me to my senses. I know that. Yes, sir, he convinced me that I was wasting my time. Here. My keen judgment assured me he was the right man to hire. Yeah, right. Hire? What? What do you mean, hire? Have you got any idea who this stranger is? Hey, yeah. No, it all happened so fast. Didn't get around to asking him his name. Yeah. Well, ask him now. What's your name, stranger? Paladin. Paladin. A hired gunslinger from San Francisco. At your service, Miss Bunyan. Not at my service. Felber, who paid him to come down here and make a fool out of me? No, I meant every word I said, Miss Bunyan. Don't call me miss. You just stand up. Be ready to draw. Nobody makes a fool out of A.J. Bunyan. Stand up! <laughs> Go ahead, Paladin. Go for your gun any time. Although you seem to doubt it, Miss Banyan, I have principles, among which is consideration for and admiration of the weaker sex. Weaker sex draw! I have never drawn on a woman, and I shall not begin now. Draw! You won't draw unless I go for my gun, and, as you see, my hands are in the air. Which makes it convenient for me to relieve you of your gun. <laughs> You may live to regret that you didn't let me kill you in a fair fight. Because I'm going to make you prove all those sweet words you told me. Why, you're a going to wine me and dine me, Mr. Paladin. You're a going to romance me. You're going to show me the world. At gunpoint, if necessary. Trevor? Uh, yes, A.J.? You still deputy in this town? Uh, yes, A.J.? Want to do me a favor? Uh, sure, A.J. Lock this critter up in the jailhouse until I come for him in the morning, will you? Uh, sure, A.J., that I'll be glad to... Uh, yeah. Come along, you. Oh, brother. This miserable cold and my sinuses. Haven't you heard about Dristan? Dristan decongestant tablets not only help drain all eight sinus cavities, critical areas of colds infection, but circulating through the blood, Dristan reaches all congested areas. In one fast-acting, uncoated, three-layer tablet, Dristan, for the first time, combines a decongestant to shrink all swollen membranes, relieve pressure and pain, an exclusive anti-allergent, to help keep breathing passages dry and clear. Pain relievers to ease body aches, reduce fever. Vitamin C to help build body resistance. This is Dristan. Today, Dristan is widely imitated. But the exclusive Dristan formula cannot be duplicated. For real relief from cold's misery and sinus congestion, there is nothing, nothing like Dristan decongestant tablets. <laughs> Fid played his part to the hilt. Poking his gun in my ribs, he pushed me out of the saloon ahead of him and marched me down the main street for all the town to see. Then we turned a corner in the direction of which I assumed was the jail. But once out of sight of the townsfolk, he pushed me into a door across which was the sign Fid Land and Development Company. Inside the office, he locked and bolted the door. Now, this time you've gone too far, Paladin. Look here, Mr. Fid. Just pay me my money. I'll be on my way. With A.J.? Not if I can help it. Yeah, but she said... I can't help what she said. You wanted me to close her saloon, and I did. But I said nothing about taking her away from Brackwater. Oh, that's her idea. You've bewitched her. You've stolen her from me. From you? Yes, Paladin. And you may as well know. I've admired Miss Banyan from afar for a long, long time. I've always felt that she could be deterred from her evil ways. She would make a man like me a, a fine wife. Oh, Mr. Fid. The, the fee I offered you was not put up by the respectable element of Brackwater, but by myself. And I must say in all frankness, I don't feel compelled to pay you for this ultimate breach of contract. Look, Mr. Fid, I don't want the lady, just the money. Oh, yes, but it appears you have her. She is leaving with you. Not if I can help it. Look, if you want her, take her. You didn't mean what you said to her? Oh, yes, I meant every word of it, but I didn't mean that I was the man to make her dreams come true. Oh! Oh, well, uh, well Mr. Patterson, you know, I think I am. Good. 
Now you just hold that thought. And in, in the meantime, just give me back my gun and let me get out of here. Yes, I'm inclined to do that, Mr. Farron. Only there's one thing I want to verify before I let you go. What's that? Having watched your technique with A.J., I've come to the conclusion that one can't fail if one simply treats her as a lady. Ah, Mr. Finn. That's not only true with Alice Jane Banyan. It's true of every woman who ever lived. Come in. Oh, good uh, morning, Mr. Potter. Good morning, Miss oh, Wong. Good morning. I bring morning paper and mail. You got special fat letter from a place called Blackwater. Oh, yes. I've been wondering when it would come. Uh, oh, uh. lots of green money. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I earned every penny of it, Miss oh, Wong. Oh, look, he something else in envelope. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. See. Miss Alice Jane Banyan and Mr. Felber Fid request your presence at their nuptials Friday the 13th at 3 o'clock at the First Brackwater Church, formerly the Paradise Saloon. Oh, are you going to make you present at <laughs> no fjords? No, no, Miss Wong, no, I think not. I make it a policy never to get mixed up in marriages. <laughs> Thirsty people everywhere prefer ice-cold Pepsi-Cola. And because it's light, it refreshes without filling. Charlie, be sociable. I am, Kay. Pepsi is a favorite of thirsty people from Maine to Hawaii, from Alaska to Florida. Charlie. It's perfect for parties or picnics. So serve Pepsi to your guests. That's helpful, but... This is the sociable part. Keep plenty of Pepsi ice-cold and ready. Remember, it goes fast because everybody likes Pepsi. Seeing still sounds more inviting. May I? Be sociable, long Keep up to date with Pepsi. Drink light, refreshing Pepsi. Stay on and air. Be sociable. Have a Pepsi. But singing doesn't say, pick up an extra carton of Pepsi today. Better yet, get a case. You do that. Have Gun, Will Travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed in Hollywood by Frank Paris and stars John Daner as Paladin, with Ben Wright as Hey Boy and Virginia Gregg as Miss Wong. Tonight's story was specially written for Have Gun, Will Travel by William N. Robeson. Featured in the cast were Howard McNear, Harry Bartell, Vic Perrin, and Jeanette Nolan. Our sincere congratulations and good wishes go to the staff and management of radio station WAAX in Gadsden, Alabama, which has joined the ever-growing list of CBS radio affiliates. Welcome again, WAAX. This is Hugh Douglas inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents Have Gun, Will Travel. Will Travel.